Hello everyone and welcome to the New Tech 3Play 3P1 Get Started Training. In this video, I'll show you how to work with playlists. Now that we have some events in the clip list, let's take a look at working with them and possibly modifying those events to meet our needs. So in the clip list, we have our event and four different angles to choose from. Now, let's make sure that clip list is turned on on the output and using the arrow keys on the control surface, we can move back and forth between angles also the duration, the out point, the in point, and also the event ID. Now if you want to change the in point of an event, navigate to the in point on the interface, then hold down shift on your control surface, and using the jog wheel, you can move the in point back and forward in time. So let's say we want to start this right as he's about to shoot, All right from here. So now to set the new in point, keep holding down shift, and select set in. And now you'll notice on the interface the in point has been changed. So now let's go ahead and play that clip and see if we can find another out point. Right there would be good. So we'll do the same thing. Let's navigate over to the out point of this clip. Select shift and set out. And now that out point has been changed and so you'll notice that the duration next to it has also been changed now to just one and a half seconds, well, 1.25 seconds. Now this will adjust the in and out point of the entire event, so every camera angle will have the same in and out points per event. Now you can use the mouse to do this as well, but it's a lot easier to use the three play control surface instead. Now whenever you create an event, your four camera angles have an area for you to add comments to them. Now this is a perfect place to add some unique titles so that you can search for later within your broadcast. Now, when doing so, you really only need to add a comment into one of these boxes because all four angles will appear when searching for the comment that you enter. Now, it's a much better practice to think of some abbreviations for actions to enter in as a comment. So you don't have to spend a, a lot of time typing to search for events. So for example, uh, what I have set up here is I, instead of typing in three pointer for a three point shot or field goal, I have abbreviations for that. So I have uh, three PT for a th uh, three pointer and then FG for a field goal. So let's take a look at this play here real quick. Let me jump over to angle number four and take a look. Yep, he's just a little bit inside the line, so let's go ahead and title that field goal. So, now all you have to do is select that angle and then press enter on your keyboard. And when you do that on the interface, this blue box will highlight, letting you know that now you can start to type in some information. All right, so I'll type in FG for field goal and press enter. Now, all of those angles have now been basically tagged with this particular uh, FG um, shortcut here. Now if you want to search for these field goals or any other shortcuts that you've made, all you have to do is go to the top of the screen here and type in what you're searching for. So I'm just going to look for only three point shots. So 3PT and to search for those, click search, boom. Now I have all these three events with those four uh, particular angles for each one of these uh, clips here. So all of these are all going to be three-point shots. Yeah, and that's how the pink team or salmon color team is going to win this game apparently. Okay, now uh, you'll notice over on the far right where it says search results, that's where you're going to have your own tab specifically for the search results. So if you want to get back to your clip lists, just go back and click physically on these clip lists or you can use the tab buttons here on your control surface which again will make this a lot easier. Now going back over to the search results here under this drop down where I typed in the 3PT you can also look for commonly used or commonly searched for terms that you searched for previously so you don't necessarily have to even go and type them in again. So now I can just select FG, press enter and now I'm only getting the field goals that I have entered in here. Now when we first started this session, I mentioned that you need to start recording so that you can gather up all of your pieces of clips and video. Now to stop recording is a little bit different. Let's take a look. Now to stop recording on your interface, you can use your mouse and just go up to the top right corner and select record and that will stop your recording. But when you're trying to stop recording on the control surface, it's a little bit different. So if I can sit here and mash this red button over and over again, or if I accidentally 
push my hand onto it, I will not stop recording. In fact, it gives you a little key here of what you're supposed to be doing. So if I click record while I'm still recording, it won't stop recording, but you'll notice in the very bottom left of the control surface, my shift button lights up. That is to make sure that you don't accidentally stop recording in the middle of your game. So if you're reaching across your desk or across your control surface to grab something, you're not accidentally, whoops, turning that button off. So just click shift and record, and now you've stopped your recording. Now let's dive into playlists, which is where you can go to create melt or highlight reels in your broadcast. So let's start in the clip list, which is where all your events live. To add individual clips to your playlists, navigate to the specific angle on the event that you want to use and click the Add Playlist button at the top of your control surface. Now if we look over on the interface under Playlist 0 is where we have the first clip in here and I've only added the one angle. Now let's say that I want to grab all of these angles and throw those into that playlist. To do that, all I have to do is use these arrow keys and navigate all the way over to the left for the event ID and select add to playlist. And now it's added all four of those camera angles to our playlist. Now, before we go any further, let's take a look at some of the elements of the playlist here. So at the very top is where we have different tabs so we can assemble different playlists. And we have uh, a couple of these up here at the top, but if you want to add more, there is a plus button here on the side that we can start to stack and just add tons of different playlists. So let me go ahead and delete a few of these to clean up my interface a bit. All right, now I'm gonna go back to the playlist that I was working with here and let me right click on that and rename it Highlight Reel. Number one. Cool. So now we have that. Uh, so I have a unique identifier for this particular tab so I can just basically glance at it and choose it really quick. Now if I go back into the playlist here, we have an option for adding media. And this is a perfect place for you to bring in either some uh, additional like commercials, for example, or bumpers so that you can have some branding opportunity and sponsorships within your replays and your playlists. You can also use the export to clip list button, which will render out your playlist as a rendered media file to use within your clip list. And also you'll have your identifier for your clip ID, also memo, which is basically where you have your different comments that you've embedded. Also here we have an option for our audio channels number one and two, and also three and four. And we can adjust those by using the mouse here if you need to. Uh, we can also adjust the endpoints and the duration of these clips and set the speed in which these clips play as well. Now we also have an option for transitions between these clips and also an option of being able to adjust the time in which our transitions take place. We also have another uh, option here for boosting our, media, our audio sources and also changing the endpoints. Now to play back your playlist, simply select the output you wish to use. In this scenario, we'll use output A and then select playlist on the control surface. Now, all you have to do is hit play and you're off and running. Now, same thing that we were using with the uh, clip list is we can also use our T-bar to slow that action down in real time. So you can slow these down and then ramp them back up as well as you need to to give you some cool dynamic effects. Now, these clips that I have right now are just cutting to one another, but we can also add transitions between these clips by clicking on the transition on each individual clip here. Now on the three play, we have a bunch of different transitions to choose from. So we have nine presets here, but you can also click a plus button here that will open up our media browser to show you all of the different transitions that are available to you. So you can assign one of these to one of those nine different presets here on the side. So we'll go ahead and use this transition here. And let me add another one. And another one. Basketball and a replay. And then I want to end this with a piece of media that I want to use as a bumper. So let's go and click add media. And let me navigate to my drive. 
and I'll select this logo sequence, which is a, a cool little New Tech logo that we can basically be have our replays brought to you by New Tech. Now, let's go ahead and click stop twice so that we can reset our clip. And now let's play that back. And now between these clips, you'll see all the different transitions that I have ending with the New Tech logo. Ding! Now you can also add your own music to these playlists to give you that championship feel. Let's take a look. Now on the far right, there is a checkbox to add your own music. And using this drop down, you can then browse your media drives to find the music that's right for you. So I already have this clip here, and let's go ahead and add that. Okay. Now there's also a gear icon to the side of that drop down, which allows you to move the start time of that clip. Let's say it has a few seconds of an intro you want to get rid of, so that you can then go through and dial that in manually to make sure that that clip is starting exactly where you want, and also adjust the volume from here as well. But I'll go ahead and just leave everything the way it is. So let's play that playlist back. I'll go ahead and select playlist on our output A. Double stop to make sure that we have that reset. And now let's hit play and you'll be able to see our highlight reel with our transitions, music bed and bumper. And go. Wow, truly magnificent. Now you can also export these playlists or highlight reels you've created for use outside the three play by rendering the playlist back into the clip list. Just select export to clip list and it will render the playlist as one bounced video clip back into the clip list. So we'll wait for that to render and boom. Now in our clip list, we now have a rendered file of this highlight reel that I can use however I want. So this is a great way to bring in highlight reels from previous broadcasts into your current one. Now this concludes the playlist portion of the 3Play 3P1 Get Started Training, and in the next video I'll show you how to use tagging.